Good evening, and uh, thank you for your warm uh, and uh, welcoming hospitality. Thank you, um, Dr. Jim Dean, Dean, Jim Dean, for inviting me and for that kind introduction. Um, it's wonderful to be here in this great state. What a beautiful campus. What a special occasion. And I'm honored this evening to share a few thoughts. Um, there are few organizations actually as closely associated with specific colors, um, the beautiful light blue, um, as well as uh, the bright red of Coca-Cola and the light blue of uh, this great institution. Um, maybe it's just me, but I think Carolina blue and Coca-Cola red go pretty well together. In fact, you see them all around uh, Chapel Hill at uh, many local eateries uh, during late night study sessions, um, and perhaps most spectacularly wherever your um, very effective and famous coach Roy Williams goes. Uh, and I don't know if you know, but he is a peerless fan and friend of Coca-Cola, and one that, uh, person that we really appreciate very much. I'd like to begin by offering my thoughts um, uh, and my congratulations first. Graduates, um, you have uh, much, a lot to be proud of today. You've worked hard the last couple of years. You've overcome many obstacles. You've accomplished something very significant in completing your studies here. And now you're beginning a new chapter. Um, and I hope that uh, you're going to look back and say thanks. You've reached truly this um, summit as individuals, all of you. And while that's a great credit to all of you, it's also a great credit to a host of other people, teachers, faculty who've encouraged you, coaches, who've challenged you, mentors that you've been inspired by, friends who've lifted you up when you needed that, moms and dads, other family members who loved you, cherished you, and rooted for you every step of the way, every single step of the way. Many of those people are here today, this evening. Parents, siblings, spouses in some cases, grandparents, aunts, uncles, friends, who might as well be family. And it's particularly fitting today on this Mother's Day to celebrate um, the dear family and friends that mean so much to, to us, to all of us, starting with all the mothers here today. So what I'd like to do is ask all of you graduates to please join me in standing up and honoring those. Please get up and honor those who are here to honor you. Thank them and honor them. Thank you. Please. Doesn't that feel good? That's what the world actually needs the most today. More goodwill and more thankfulness. And less pessimism, less doubt, less doom and gloom. There's no shortage in the wor uh, world today of naysayers. In fact, we see them all around, like a runaway bull um, uh, across every spectrum. There's a lot of fear of the present. There's a lot of fear of the future, fear about just anything and everything. What was once used to sell newspapers and magazines actually now sells clicks and connections and page views. But I'd like to offer a different perspective. I'd like to say that we have much to be thankful for. Because the simple truth is there's never been a better time. There's never been a better time, a more exciting time, 
a more promising time than this time, which is your time. Things are getting better. They're not getting worse. All around the world that I go, when I go and travel, things are getting better. Of course, not in every case. But they are getting better. Our world, your world, is becoming more prosperous, more healthy, better educated, more peaceful, and more closely connected. On a global basis, if you take a few simple statistics, life expectancy is up from 59 to 70 since 1970. 59 to 70. Infant mortality has declined 40% in the last 25 years, quarter of a century. Medicine, antibiotics, immunizations are more accessible than ever before. School enrollment on a global basis is booming, going up from 55 to 70% in the last 25 years. And the number of major armed conflicts is down by a third since 1985. Discrimination is down. Acceptance is up. Women and girls are getting m much more opportunities to grow and prosper. And agricultural is, agriculture is becoming even more efficient than ever before. Access to information exploded in a way no one could have imagined just even 20 years ago. And it continues to expand on an exponential basis. Extreme poverty is declining. Global per capita has doubled since 1970. And in this coming decade, as you start your journey once more, there will be a billion new people coming into the middle class. A billion new people coming into the middle class in this next coming decade. And people everywhere are connecting in new ways, collaborating in new ways, leveraging innovation like they've never before done it. And so we have to, ha we, we should always say there's a lot of things to be thankful for. Are there no challenges? Of course there are challenges. Um, trust in major institutions has been shaken in the world, particularly in the last five years. This new prosperity that I talked about is putting new pressures on resources around the world. Businesses are struggling in many parts of the world. Nations are struggling in Europe, in, in some other parts of the world. And there are other challenges from energy to AIDS to human rights and beyond. And, but that is nothing new. It's always been there. Every generation, just like your generation, has faced challenges. And generations are often judged by how well they meet the great challenges of their time. And yours is going to be no different. You're going to be judged by the same. What is different, though, is your generation compared to the past. Your generation is different. Where you're from, what you've experienced, and how you think is different to how I, where I was when I was wearing the same uniform in 1974. Yours is the most engaged, the most informed, the most altruistic, the most technologically advanced, most entrepreneurial generation in history history of the world. And just look, look at what's happening with social entrepreneurship. Young leaders like yourselves are solving problems through business, through incredible feats. And for the future, your generation is going to achieve growth, as people always have, through innovation, creating new advances in energy, technology, food production, and you are going to lead the way. In fact, I know that the world is counting on your generation. I am, and I know the entire world is. 
You've, when you arrived on this campus, you arrived with great promise. You were well equipped, and you're, you're leaving now with incredible opportunity. Incredible opportunity. Now, more than ever, you, you will have the power as business people, as businesswomen, businessmen, to create value. To create value for who? For employees, your fellow associates, wherever you work, for consumers. Create value for suppliers or other partners. Create value for investors and create value for yourselves. And that's just the beginning. Many, many companies are now putting their expertise to work for people beyond their traditional value chains. At our company, Coca-Cola, for example, we're, we're working with partners across what I call the golden triangle. The golden triangle of business, government, and civil society. Together, we're providing greater access to clean drinking water, boosting availability of medicines in hard-to-reach places like Asia, Africa, Latin America, opening up new opportunities for both women entrepreneurs and small businesses. Because only the complicated societal problems of the world today can be solved through closer collaboration in that golden triangle between government, business, and civil society. We're also far from being alone as, global, as a global enterprise committed to contributing to the greater good. In the years to come, this coming decade, people like you are going to make all the difference. Will you be challenged personally? Yes, probably sooner than later. In 78, when I began my Coca-Cola career, career, I also had a master's degree. I was in New York. I answered a newspaper ad. I interviewed. I went down from New York to Atlanta and joined the Coca-Cola company. The next nine months, I spent on trucks in places like Lubbock, Texas, in Needham, Massachusetts, Los Angeles, bringing Coca-Cola into the stores, merchandising. I used to get up at 5 in the morning and start at 5.30 or 5.45 on those trucks. It wasn't glamorous, I can tell you. Getting up at, at that time, going into supermarkets, bringing product off the truck. There were some moments when I asked what I was doing when I asked myself. But I always believe that, I always believe that today is better than yesterday and tomorrow is going to be better than today. And actually that's a pretty good philosophy that has carried me for a long time, including today. That tomorrow is better than today and today was better than yesterday. Let me just offer a few more things that have always helped me in my 34 years in being in business across. And I've worked on four continents over the last 34 years for Coca-Cola. First, nothing is more important than relationships. Nothing. So one of my mantras is never eat alone. Never eat alone. Always use that time to be with some people. The relationships that you have formed with each other here, always cherish those. They will serve you well in the years to come. I still keep in touch with, with um, my friends even from elementary school, from high school. And today it's become easier to keep those, instead of posting letters all the time, it's much easier to, to keep those relationships and 
to nurture those relationships and build on those. These relationships, for me, have always proven invaluable, and I know that they will for you too. Secondly, staying humble is such an important thing. I always say that I, like, I love to carry my own bag. And that's, of course, literally and metaphorically important. Building a business your own, or a business that someone else owns, who you work for, is not only about success. It's about repeating success. I always think about it in simple terms. It's not easy. It's easy to have success once or twice. It's not easy always to repeat success. How many Olympic gold medalists do you know that have won gold medals in repetitive successive Olympic Games. And responsibility is about creating the conditions, always, the conditions in order to repeat success. And success is defined in simple terms for me about making a promise into the future without a predetermined outcome. The other thing that's really have been, has been important to me all my life in business is about having respect for cash. Keep some cash on you always. Take it out from time to time and look at it. Because one of the problems with our society is that we have forgotten about cash. It's all plastic, and it's so important. Part of the problems that we're encountering in the world today is all about forgetting the importance of the respect for cash. Sometimes in big meetings I have, I send people to the bank and we get an airline, you know, those old airline bags, put cash in it, and then put it upside down and pour all the cash out and look at it so that we can have respect for it. So we can remember to turn the lights off at night. Because if we don't do that, then we won't have enough fuel to keep our brands healthy. Having respect for cash always leads you to eliminate duplication and eliminate unnecessary expenses. Because today, somehow, everything gets paid for. You travel, the airline ticket gets paid for. You don't see how that happens. The bills for electricity, water, tax, all get paid for through all these debit systems. You never see it. Your salary, when you start working now, all of you, will get into the, will come into your bank account. Money will be taken out of your bank account to pay for some things. The only time, perhaps, you will see some cash is when you're at the gas station, and even then, 99%, it'll be by, by, by plastic money. Respect for cash is really important. And then learning, learning every day. Around the world, when I travel, which is 200 days a year, every week I will visit a few stores, no matter where I am, with my associates. And every single time for the last 30 years, I've learned something when I visited a store, learned something about a consumer who said something about our brands. Learn something from a competitor who was merchandising in that same store their own products. Learn something from the customer himself or herself talking about our service, our quality of service. And without fail, last week I was in 
Tanzania and Kenya, in Dar es Salaam and Nairobi. I visited stores with our partners, many stores in both towns. Again, I learned something. Next week, I'll be, go the week after next, I'll be going to India. I'll be visiting stores. I'll learn something again. It's so important to keep fresh, learn something, because as this, one of the most important things in the world today is growth. Can you crack the calculus for growth? Growth as individuals, all of you, that you need to grow every day by learning. Growth for businesses and even growth for countries. To the extent that we can crack the calculus for growth, we will be successful. To the extent that you as individuals will crack your calculus for growth, for learning, you will be successful businesses that you work for that can crack the calculus for growth, you, those businesses will be successful and will grow and prosper. Hire more people. Be good citizens in the community. Be part of a sustainable community. And to the extent that countries can crack the calculus for growth, they will be successful. Countries that can't do that, if they're democratic, they will have a change of government. And if they're not democratic, they will have a revolution. That's what happens all the time. Growth makes the world go round. Organizational growth, professional growth, personal growth. One of the greatest leaders in, the, in, in our history, in our 126 year history, was a man called Mr. Woodruff. He ran the company and was the major shareholder and ran the company for 50 years. He always used to say the world belongs to the discontent. I have added a word to it, which is one of my favorite two words, constructively discontent. And I hope you'll do the same. Be always constructively discontent with yourself, with what you're doing. You should always guard, and if you are, you will be guarded against fear and cynicism and doubt, but also you will be guarded against arrogance. And as a business person, all of you are going into the world of business in one way or another. You should always think about being a tremendous force for good. Don't let anyone say anything different. Because business is a noble calling. Providing products, providing services that people want. That's what business is. Creating value for a host of stakeholders, not just investors and shareholders, for everyone that touches that business. And then helping individuals, enterprises, communities grow and prosper. So in this incredible era of challenges, dichotomies, contradictions, and even greater opportunities, you will do all of that, I know, and more. So, I know that the world is counting on all of you. I know that. And I have every single confidence that all of you are going to deliver and also never forget to have a smile when you're do doing that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.